Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you so much for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours right here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. And I am so happy to let you know, for those of you who would like to find us online, we have a brand new online address. We have an online address. It's www.nccradio.org. How easy is that? nccradio.org. Herbally Yours remains committed to bringing you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. And with that, I'd like to introduce to you my guest for today, and that is Gail Barnes, Ph.D. She is a technology and sustainability expert who has consulted with companies worldwide on product sustainability innovation with composting and recycling strategies, as well as navigating food safety and regulatory processes. She began her career as a high school teacher and then moved into corporate in South Africa, and she has a passion for sustainability and the environment that has led to her work in several global environmental initiatives, including the development of packaging to protect the nutritional value and taste of food. Her career has helped her gain insight on industry technology and consumer trends and education. And we are so happy to bring on board Dr. Gail Barnes with a degree in biology and a PhD in applied chemistry and food science. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Barnes. It's wonderful to be with you. So, you know, we we did a show before, but this is a brand new show because we have our own listening audience here. And we're going to talk about the effortless environmentalist. And what does that word mean to you, Dr. Barnes? Baby steps and easy things that one can do that all add up to make a difference in the end and help us to go green effortlessly. Now, why should somebody be worried about the environment to begin with? It seems that, you know, unfortunately, our own country and the laws we're passing now seem to actually be moving in the other direction. Well, you know, we are the number one trash-producing country in the world. An astounding number of 1,609 pounds of trash per person per year. And we used to be able to deal with it by sending it to China. And that's not going to be possible anymore because China's just um, exercised a ban against the importation of garbage. So waste is going to become more difficult for us to ditch. And whether we like it or not, we're really going to have to embrace a zero waste mentality in the future. Well, that sounds like a long way to go. From how many pounds a day did you say to zero? Um, How are we going to get there? You know, that's why effortless environmentalism comes in, because we can get overwhelmed if we try to do too much. Going green can become very overwhelming, and if we want to make bigger changes in our lives, then we are up for all that we have time for. Those things don't get done. We all remember New Year and making New Year's resolutions. Well, how many of us are still sticking to those resolutions? One of the biggest obstacles to improving environmental conditions is our daily habits. But if we can start by making a few small minor changes every day, it really, really does make a very big difference in the end. And I've got three things I'd love to talk to the listeners to to a debt today, and that is uh, ditch jogging, start plugging, bag a compostable lunch, and unplugging on autopilot, all three very small, very easy things we can all do. And 
And if all of us are listening do that, it really will make a difference in the end. And, and we will talk about those. But I first want to revisit something very important you spoke about, because 60 Minutes had a special on this, the fact that what happens when we are recycling? You know, we're going through the major effort, let's say, of just putting the plastic bottle in the recycling bin and putting it out in a special container in front of our house, especially those of us who live in Nassau County, they have that, and uh, some areas of Suffolk as well, and some areas around the country. And then those plastics just disappear from our front door and we go, oh, we recycled them. But what they showed on this 60 Minutes was that what happened was all that plastic is loaded on a barge and with a huge use of energy and transporting it all the way to China got melted down in pits in China with no environmental regulations, with the fumes from the plastics that are being melted down going right into the face of mostly Chinese women and children who worked in those ditches. So, you know, that was a very eye-opening thing for me. Now, that took care of us getting rid of it, and now you're saying that flow has been interrupted because of the Chinese now coming on board with their own higher level of of wanting to move the other way with environmental awareness. Absolutely. So that plastic is going to one place. It's going to the same place that 79% of plastic in the past has gone to, and that's to landfill, to litter, or even to the ocean. Let me give you some numbers. 8.3% billion metric tons of plastic has been produced, of which 6.3 billion metric tons has become plastic waste, of which only 9% is recycled. Recycling isn't a solution, it's not even a band-aid on a solution, and the situation gets much, much worse when one talks about flexible packaging which is uh, something that uh, is a major problem because it just can't be treated in existing facilities. Basically, it gums, if if one uses a very technical term here, it gums the system up. And so if you want to recycle things like plastic bags, you've got to take them back to stores, those stores that will take them back, and then they're sent to special facilities. But there's a company that I've been working with in Israel that has a much easier way for us to do the right thing when it comes to flexible plastics, and that is to compost them because they make this company is called Tipper. It's a startup out of Israel. It's a wonderful. It's a two lady founders started it. It's a beautiful story, and they make compostable packaging and. They can make various types of compostable packaging, so some can have (coughs) no special properties, other kinds can really extend the shelf life of products. And when it comes to food waste, being able to extend the shelf life of a product is really, really important. So compostable packaging is a really easy way to do the right thing when it comes to plastic packaging. Well, that sounds like a a very good possible solution. Now, also, um, I just want to tell our listeners that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and my guest today is with us online, and her name is Dr. Gail Barnes. And what would you say, Gail, is the best way for people to get in touch with you um, after our show today? Well, the best way to get in touch with me is on Twitter at Z-A-G-R-R-L. And if you want to just generally have an ongoing update about environmental issues, packaging, composting, how to do it, and of course, compostable packaging, I really do recommend the group that I've been working with, TIPACOR. That's at T-I-P-A-C-O-R-P dot com. They really have, it's not one of those Twitter feeds, you know, where it's uh, me, 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 me. 
It's a lot of good news and information. And if you want to stay up to date on exactly what is happening in the packaging sphere, whether it comes to recycling or composting, that's a really good way to do it. Well, let's go into some of those special terms that you brought up, Dr. Barnes, because some of our listeners may not have even heard of this. We've heard of composting, but what is compostable packaging? Well, compostable packaging is packaging that is specially formulated um, it's a special technology that allows it to break down in compost in the same way as organic waste so imagine an orange an orange peel breaking down in compost the compostable packaging for example that made by tipper breaks down in exactly the same way and Compost is described rightfully so as black gold. If uh, one wants to avoid the expense or the environmental impact of fertilizers, compost and making one's own compost is a really terrific way to add nutrients to your soil. And if your soil, you know, soil is a living thing, it can actually get sick. If you want to restore the health of your soil in the same way that you do to your body, give it compost. Compost is food for the soil. It's natural food for the soil made from the breakdown of organic material by bugs, otherwise known as microorganisms, and returns the nutrients to the soil, makes the soil healthy again. Uh, You know, some of your listeners may follow the story of probiotics and gut health and why good bugs are healthy for us. Well, it's the same with the soil. You know, it really, really is a living system and you can feed it with compost and you can make that compost yourself. Well, that is exciting, and there is a great organization I've worked with right on Long Island called Long Island Compost, and they do what you're saying, and they make sort of bags of soil that you can purchase, and they can even come and bring it to your house, and it's amazing the change without any chemicals or any kind of toxic poisons that it makes, so I, you know, that's really sort of the best of both worlds, like you're saying, just moving towards a higher level of consciousness and knowing that we can cut down on these products and even make the best use of them. Well, we're going to take a break right here, and I'd like to remind you that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Listen live or online at www.nccradio.org or on iHeartRadio app. For more information on today's guest or topic, email whpc at ncc.edu. Stay tuned. Herbal Yours will be right back. Okay, so maybe you didn't finish or broke your New Year's resolution to get to the gym or start that project you had kept on the back burner since, well, okay, the dawn of time. I get it. That's okay. But you know... There's one thing you can do to get back that inspiration, that can-do spirit. Perhaps you or someone you know has a vehicle that they don't drive anymore. Why not consider donating it to the National Federation of the Blind? All you have to do is call 866-282-7327. That's 866-282-7327. You can also log online to nfb.org and click donate. And maybe you know someone that's blind. You can reach out to nfb at nfb.org. That's nfb at nfb.org. So what do you have to lose? You have everything to gain by helping someone in need, like your motivation. Oh, and a tax deduction. So why not get started today? And remember, charity is only a phone call away. And welcome back to more right here on... Herbally Yours on The Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Today we have as our guest Dr. Gail Barnes and she is a technology and sustainability expert. So welcome back Dr. Barnes. 
It's wonderful to be back.